Okay, hello everyone. And uh, we will, today we will finish the theorem we started last time. And uh, we will hopefully have time to see at least one example of Bosby localization. And uh, we will uh, see more next time. So recall, so if E is a spectrum, a spectrum A is E a cyclic if its E homology is trivial, that is A tensor, E tensor A is zero, and the spectrum X is E local if for every A E cyclic, um, we have the mapping spectrum from A to X is zero. And here you can also put the mapping space since you can replace A by its shifts, but uh, uh, we will use the mapping spectrum because it's more convenient. And the theorem we want to prove today is uh, for every X spectrum, there exists a map, X goes to L E of X, which is an uh, E equivalence, by which I mean its cofiber is E acyclic, such that uh, L E X is E local. This remember was the subcategory of E local spectra. In particular, for every E local spectrum Y, we have that the mapping space from uh, L E X Y is equivalent to the mapping space from X of Y, i.e. Uh, the inclusion sp E of E local spectra into spectra has a left adjoint. Okay. Is this statement clear? Um, also, I should say that LEX is sometimes also called XE. But I'll try to stick with LEX uh, because I think it's a more widespread notation. But you know, you might sometimes see also XE. Okay, so the this is essentially a cellular argument, and for these we need the following result. Well, we need several finalness results, but we start with. Uh, hmm. Yeah, the following result, proposition. Sorry, uh, is someone talking? Uh, okay, uh, proposition, um, or, uh, yeah. Um, um, maybe, maybe I would have a question. Sure. The question gets asked once. So to promote this LE, to a funk, there is really enough to, to give such a map. So there is. Yes, because, OK, I didn't do a lot of details in higher category theory, but there is a, this a result. Let me call it a theorem, although it's overstating it. So if you have a functor of infinity categories, uh, such that uh, for every, what was it? Yeah, for every D in D, am I doing the right thing? Uh, sorry, I might, I might be doing the left or the right adjoint, am I switching yeah. uh, whichever you're using? No problem. Yeah, okay, I want this. This is uh, co-representable. Then F has a, uh, left adjoint. 
sending D to the co-representing element. You can try to prove it for one categories if you want to, to convince yourself that it's true. The proof is basically the same, only slightly more complicated for infinity categories. Uh, but it essentially follows from the unit embedding, right? So these, uh, these, these functors sending D to this object, uh, it's a map from D to pre sheaves on C. And this is telling you that these uh, lens in the image of the unit embedding. And so this is factorial indeed. And then you need to, it's, it's easy to see that this gives you an adjoint. And it, this works for batting for infinity categories. Thank you much. Sorry, I am sort of taking the strategy of sort of assuming standard category theory fact and applying them to infinity categories without giving the full proofs, but very often it's verbatim or verbatim with minor modifications. So I think I'm justified and I think it's more important to see them in use. Uh, so then you can read the proofs uh, for your own. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that this theorem exists. So this Really yeah, yeah, yeah. All this the theorem time. exists, and I think I also gave a sketch of the proof now, so I think everyone should be more or less convinced. Okay, so let me. And actually, I already used this theorem implicitly, I think, when I constructed, well, at some point in the recognition principle, I think I, I used this theorem implicitly. Put it here. Um, okay, so we need the following proposition. So let E, so let, sorry, let Kappa, a regular cardinal, such that pi star E is less than Kappa. And I may or may not have to assume that Kappa is uncountable here. I'm not. Very interested in. So then every acyclic spectrum, uh, sorry, every E acyclic spectrum is, uh, well, in fact, a kappa filter colimit, although we only care that it is a colimit of kappa small E acyclic spectra. And why do we care about this theorem? Because this has a corollary uh, that there exists a E acyclic spectrum such that X is E local if and only if maps from A to E is zero. So I can check on one E acyclic spectrum. And these will allow us to, to construct. And the proof is, well, let AI be the set. And by set, I mean I take one for each equivalence class of kappa small E acyclic spectra. where kappa is as in the proposition, then we let A to be just the direct sum of all AI, which now exists because it is a, a set. And that's why we all need to do all these, these, this dance and song with, uh, with kappas because we, were, we would like to take the direct sum of all ES cyclic spectra, but of course that's not something we're allowed to do. So now map a E is zero if and only if map A I E is zero for every I. And now if uh, A prime is an E acyclic spectrum, we can write map A prime E as the limit of map AI for some diagram of AIs. 
by the previous proposition. And so if map AE is zero, then map A prime E is zero. It's some sort of finitary or boundedness condition in being ES E local. In fact, in, when we'll see the examples, we will see that it's fairly easy to construct these A's explicitly. Like we will find some very small and concrete objects that have this property, but this corollary tells us that they always exist. Okay, now should I do first the theorem using the corollary or the proposition? Excuse me, Daniel. Yes. So what's the role of X in this corollary? Oh, uh, that's because I am silly and I swapped E and X at some point. Um, terribly sorry about this, about it. Uh, you must be okay. extremely confused. Uh, <laughs> Now I'm no longer. Thank uh, I wrote E in the statement and then uh, X, sorry, X in the statement and E in the proof, which is not something I was supposed to do. Uh, okay. I remember this, this, this condition here is X is E local. The mapping spectrum out of every acyclic, e acyclic uh, spectrum is trivial. Okay, I think I'm going to prove the theorem using the corollary, and then and then uh, we will we will go back and prove the proposition. Okay, so remember we have X and we want to construct L, L mapping to L E X, an E equivalence such that uh, X is, uh, L E X is E local. So fix A as in the corollary. Uh, then note that A is in spur, oh, in spur um, what, I want to call it kappa for some regular cardinal kappa. Which might be bigger than the previous one. And it's, it's actually with the construction of A I gave you, it will be bigger. But. It's not important. Remember that a every spectrum is kappa small for some kappa. We proved this last time. So, so we are going to do a construct L E X by transfinite recursion up to level K. So how does this work? So we want that all the maps from A to X die. So we start with X zero equals X. And then we take X1 to be the cofiber of sorry, X of all the maps from sigma and A to X, where N is in Z and they're indexed by, by all the possible maps. And I mean Okay, all possible maps, I should be precise. I mean, all possible homotopy classes of maps, of course. I choose one representative for each homotopy class. And then you go on. Precisely, I define X alpha plus one to be the cofiber, as before, of all maps to X alpha. And if lambda is a limit, so this is alpha ordinal, 
And if, if you have a limit ordinal, you just take the co-limit. So I'm, I'm, I'm going on and killing everything. And the claim, so first of all, the claim that X to X alpha is an E equivalence for every alpha less than, less or equal than kappa. Uh, we, we could continue for ordinals, but I'm going to stop at level kappa. And the other claim is that X kappa is E local. So X kappa is L E X. That is the claim. So, okay, the first claim is easy because uh, uh, you have the map X alpha to X alpha plus one is an E equivalence by construction. Since it's the cofiber when the, the source of the map is, uh, is an E acyclic object. And of course, E equivalences are stable under colimits. So E goes to E lambda, which is just a colimit of the map from E goes to uh, X, sorry, goes to X alpha for alpha less than lambda is an E equivalence. So claim one is, is basically by construction. The, the important fact is that after we got up to level kappa, we managed to, uh, yeah, we managed to, uh, to get an E local point. And the point is that these, so remember X kappa is the co-limit for alpha less than kappa of X alpha. And now the set of alpha that is less than kappa is by construction is a kappa filtered poset because uh, well, every time you have a subset of kernel less than kappa, you can find something bigger than that. That's just how things work. So we have that map A to X kappa is the same thing as the co-limit for alpha less than kappa of map A to X alpha. So for example, let's take an element uh, F in pi N of map A of X kappa this is just a homotopy class of a map from sigma n a to x kappa. And therefore these factors through uh, x alpha for some alpha less than kappa. Uh, but then its image in X alpha plus one is zero because in X alpha plus one, we have killed everything of this form. And so it's image in pi n map A X kappa is zero. And this proves claim two. So you see, once we have the, the, the proposition Constructing the localization is just a basic uh, transfinite recursion argument. Um, can you scroll up to the beginning of the proof for a second? Yeah. Um, so I have the here. Okay. Okay, thanks. So to, to sure, we, we construct this transfinite sequence, so X alpha, where at every step we kill all the maps from, from all the suspensions of A. And then when you get at level 
and these are by definition E equivalences. So we just need to show that at some point we get some, uh, so, some uh, e-local thing. And that's because uh, uh, A is kappa small for some kappa. We don't know how big it is. It might be huge. We don't care. Some kappa will exist. OK? Good. By the way, this, this proof is secretly basically the proof of the adjoint functor theorem in our setting, uh, if you've seen it before. Uh, the, the hypothesis uh, that this proposition I'm about to prove is essentially an accessibility hypothesis for the, the category of equivalences, which is one hypothesis in one of the versions of the adjoint functor theorem. But I don't want to do the general theory. I'm just going to do this special proposition. So let's go back here. Let me copy the statement of the proposition. And let's, let me go back here. And let's prove. OK, before I go through, through this proof, are there questions? Okay, so the, I will reduce this proof uh, to a different proposition, um, which essentially is telling us that, so let's fix now X on ESC to the spectrum. And we want to, to construct it. And the goal here is to show that every homotopy class of X can be seen by small ES cyclic spectra. So what I'm going to prove first is the following. So for every mm, class, so let's see what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it F in pi N of X, there exists W kappa small a cyclic spectrum with a map W goes to X called G such that G lower star, oh, such that uh, F lifts to pi star of W. This is the, actually, this is the key, key point in this proof. I can see all homotopy classes so note it, if I didn't have a cyclic here, it would be trivial. I could just take a sphere. But of course, spheres are basically never acyclic. So I can show that I can add a few cells to this sphere so that it, uh, it becomes acyclic, but I don't need to add too many cells. My cells are bounded by this, this kappa. So to prove this proposition first, I have a remark. So suppose that F is a finite spectrum, then the cardinality of the homology is less than kappa. And that's proven uh, as we did last time by showing that uh, the set of spectra such as the cardinality of their homology is less than kappa. Uh, remember the homology is the homotopy groups of the tensor product. Uh, is closed under finite direct sums and uh, cofiber sequences. And it contains all the spheres by our hypothesis on E. So, okay. All 
Okay, let's do the, the thing. So we we will construct W as the co-limit of W0 goes W1 plus et cetera goes to X. Where at every step we're going to add a few cells. And we start with W0 sigma n of s. And this map is going to be our f, which I'm going to call a g0. So this g0 works perfectly, except that its source is not acyclic. So, well, let's start to fix that. The suppose we have, and then they were, sorry, we will construct it so that uh, the map E star VI goes to E star, sorry, WI plus one is the zero map. S sorry, such that the map, your map, because then this implies that E star of W is the co-limit over I of E star WI, which is zero. Because I'm thinking a co-limit of a bunch of stuff, which is probably non-zero. It's probably huge or whatever, but the transition maps are always the zero maps. So, learning. So at this point, we, we just have, so we have WI and we need, mapping to x with gi and we need to construct just a factorization through a map that's zero in he homology well but that's now easy so let fi to be uh, Sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, no, sorry, that's not the point. The point is a note that WI is some co limit, uh, now J in J of FJ, FJ finite spectra, and J filtered. This is the omega case of the theorem we proved last time. So the homology is just the co-limit of the homologies of the FJ. So for every little x, in E star F, and yes, here I mean a homogeneous element. Uh, if you're curious, uh, we can find an Fx finite with a map star F, sorry, Fx to Wi such that X is in the image of fx to e star wi because x is in comes from some element in this co-limit so now we can take the sum for all x uh, in E star WI of FX. And these maps to WI. And note that this is kappa small because E star WI has cardinality less than kappa by induction. 
and all fx are finite. Yeah, I should have, sorry, I should have said that in the induction, I also want cardinality of E star wi less than kappa. That's an important element in the induction. I should mention it. Okay, sorry, let's go back. So we have, uh, this map um, oh oh sorry I made a mistake I made a mistake, I'm sorry. Uh, I shouldn't have taken WI. Hmm. Ah. Yeah, okay, sorry, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have taken WI, but WI bar, the fiber of the map from WI into X. and then these for w bar and note that since x is e acyclic the map from w i bar to w i is an equivalence in, in e homology yeah i'm sorry let me pause for a second because i made a I made a mistake in this construction I was confused because their homology is the same, of course, but the spectra are different, so I need to use them. I can put a bar here, even if it doesn't change. Oh, sorry for this mistake. Um, is, um, is the proof clear with this correction so far? So I can take these. And I can take the cofiber. Of this map. And sorry, and the reason why I need to to factor through W I bar is that so that now uh, this composition. Let me in purple is canonically null homotopic because I can use the, the, the null homotopy of the map from WI bar to X. And so it factors through WI plus one. Sorry, I forgot this, this technical point. Um, sorry, so at some point you said that it follows that for all x in E lower star f, um, what's big F? Shouldn't this be W um, bar? Yeah. Yes, it should. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, that happens because I, I didn't manage to print my notes and I am occasionally glancing at the screen with the notes and occasionally, uh, uh, so I, I, I lose pieces of the proof. Uh, even if I wrote the notes myself, but still. Okay, but it's clear the construction of Wi goes to Wi plus one. And the point is that by definition, this map is surjective in homology because, well, we constructed it so that it is, and uh, this is an equivalence. So this map is the zero map in the long exact sequence as we wanted. So 
since its kernel is the image of this map here, which is surjective by construction. And now, uh, and the cardinality of E star WI plus one bar, and sorry, no bar, is less than kappa by the usual argument that it fits between two things that have cardinality less than kappa. Okay, so that is the proof of the second proposition. So remember, the second proposition was saying that for every acyclic spectrum, you can find all you can lift all its homology, uh, all its uh, homotopy classes to some to some acyclic spectrum, which is kappa small. So now we are ready to actually prove our proposition. So proof. Oh. Mm. Proposition. Are there questions so far? Um. Can, can you again um, walk us through the argument of the last diagram? So you, you put, you so, apply okay. E star on everything? No. On the... Oh, here? Yeah. yeah, okay, so I need to prove two things. So, okay, now this guy is, is clearly kappa small because it's a cofiber of a map of kappa small spectra. I need to prove, well, this fact, which is kind of tautological that it's it's not that logical, but it, it's actually true for every kappa small spectrum that it's homology, e homology has kernality less than kappa. So probably I should have just assumed that. Uh, and then, then this map is zero in homotopy. But then this is constructed as a cofiber. So uh, this map is zero in e homology means that this map is surjective on e homology by the long exact sequence. And this map is subjective on e-homology by construction. Because I, I literally took every class here and lifted it to some finite spectrum. And I, I am using that this map is an equivalence on e-homology, of course. Uh, but that, I mean, I have to use that X is a cyclic at some point. Uh, Otherwise, the proof would be highly suspicious. And the here is where I'm using it. And then, okay, then I have this, this thing such that all the maps are zero on homology uh, and all spectra are kappa small. So I can take their filter colimit, and yes, here I'm using kappa uncountable actually, because I'm using that a filter colimit, sorry, that a sequential colimit of kappa small objects is still kappa small. So maybe I should. Well, let's assume kappa uncountable for this argument. As you see, we, we are always allowed to enlarge kappa, so that's not a that's not a big deal. Okay, and now finally. We can prove the main proposition and close the circle. And now the proof is identical to a proof you've already seen. So let J be the category of, well, the infinity category of kappa small acyclic spec, uh, e acyclic spectra with a map to X. So it's a J is a subcategory of B 
these fiber product fiber product of categories. Sorry, it's actually equal to this fiber product of category if you want. Then we can take the colimit for W in J of W and these has a map to X. And our claim is, well, first of all, claim J has all kappa small colimits. And that's because kappa small e acyclic spectra are closed under kappa small colimits. And so J is kappa filtered. Okay, this claim is easy. And the other claim is this map is an equivalence. And uh, OK, as before, it's enough to prove this. And note that here I am using, I'm using uh, that this map is equivalent. Here I'm using that JE is kappa filtered. Uh, because pi star doesn't commit with colimits in general, but commits with filtered colimits. So even if for the proposition, I didn't care that the colimit was kappa filtered for what I wanted to use it, I still need to, to use it in the proof. And okay, we know it's subjective. by the proposition we just proved. The proposition we just proved, it literally says that this map is subjective. That every class here can be lifted to the class here for some W. So now let's take an element in J and F in by N of W such that GF is zero. And we want to show that this dies maybe not in W, but in, in some further element of this filter system, the Kappa filter system. And does it work? Uh, Second. Oh yeah, that's very simple. So we have so we have this map F goes to W goes to X and I can take the fiber f of g. And this composition is zero, tells us exactly that this map factors in some way, non-canonical, but we don't care, we lift it somehow. That is to say, we choose a new homotopy of gf. And now note that f is e acyclic since W and X are, so let me call it this F bar, this lift. So by the proposition, we can find W bar kappa small E acyclic with a map G bar from W bar to F such that F bar lifts to, I don't know, F double bar, I guess. This is possibly not the best notation. Yeah. 
So I have these and these rules, uh, whatever. And call it H, doesn't matter. Now W bar is kappa mu and GH is has a canonical null homotopic. Since it factors through F. So I can take W prime, the cofiber of W, w and I can factor G by some G prime. This is the, the, the kind of game we've been playing for a while. It's maybe it looks complicated to, to copy, but it's it's really some kind of diagram chasing at the end. G and factors through W prime. And okay, and let me call this, I don't know, AK prime. H prime. And now, okay, now G prime, H prime, F is the same thing as G prime, H prime, H, F double bar, which is zero because this nice guy is zero. Oh, and this is kappa small because it's a cofiber of kappa small things. The end. This is essentially the same proof as uh, the proof that <clears throat> every spectrum is a kappa filter co-limit of kappa small spectra, uh, only done for acyclic spectra with the help of the proposition we just proved. And this closes the circle. And now we have the existence of Bausch localizations. Each. Okay. So we are roughly halfway through the class. So it's good because it means I, I get to give you at least one of the two main examples of Bausch localizations today, which is a good thing. Questions about this proof I just did? Okay, if there are no questions, let's go to the... So, to the first example. Inverting primes. So I decided to first do the example where I invert only one prime and then to do the example where I invert a family of primes, even if the proofs are basically the same, but I think it's helpful to see them first in the case where you invert only one prime. So now let P a prime number. And in fact, it doesn't really need it to be a prime number. I'm just doing it in the case of a prime number, I don't know for tradition, I guess. Uh, remember, we defined this spectrum here, the limit of the multiplication by P map. It has the property, this is called the Z one over P more spectrum. 
because it has the property that is homology is z1 over p when star is zero and zero otherwise. I actually should probably um, uh, put a word of warning here. That for every abelian group A, you can construct a Moore spectrum and it is unique under certain hypotheses, but this construction is not functorial, contrary to the case of the allenberg maclean spectrum. Uh, you, you cannot have a functor. Uh, I'll probably put in the exercises for next week, though, not the one that will appear shortly after this class. Um, and maybe when I'll talk about completion, I'll explain why it cannot be functorial, uh, which is an annoying fact, but it's a fact. It's something we have to live with. But this exists without any doubt. And okay, the goal now is to study LS1. So the first remark is what is the, homo the homology of this guy? Well, this is just a collimit of the multiplication by P map. And so this is the homotopy of the spectrum with P inverted. In particular, and let me try write it as a lemma, uh, a spectrum X is S one over P as cyclic, if and only if uh, P acts locally and potently, i.e. Uh, on by star of X, i.e. every element of pi star of X is P power torsion. And this is just a, a statement about localization in classical uh, module theory. But I wanted to, to, to state it clearly. And so from these, we deduce the following lemma. So a spectrum X is S one over P local if and only if P acts invertibly ah, sorry. on X or equivalently on pi star of X. The multiplication by P is an equivalence, or if you want, every element is uniquely P divisible, you know, choose your favorite. Statement. Okay. And here goes the proof. So, but which direction is easier? Let's do first. this. No. Actually, let's do first this, this implication. So the first remark is that S mod P is S1 over P acyclic. And that's because this guy is just a collimit. Sorry, it's a S one over P over P, but P is an equivalence on S one over P. 
So, the uh, flag. Okay, now if P, now why am I doing this? Oh, no. sorry, yeah, I'm doing the other implication. So if X is S P local, then I want to say that S over P tensor X is zero. That's what it means to be to act invertibly on X. I.e. multiplication by P maps is an equivalence. And now I'm going to do something slightly uh, perverse and write these as the mapping spectrum from S to X. And then this is the mapping spectrum from S to X. And I'm going to write this map as the multiplication by P map induced on the first component, because then the fiber of this map is map S over P X. And that is zero because X is S, sorry, one over P local. And S over P was S one over P acyclic. It's kind of a perverse way of, of writing this, but it is. Okay, that's one implication. Now let's do the other implication. The other implication oh, so works like this. Suppose P acts invertibly on X, then the map uh, from maps x over p x into x given by precomposition s one over p sorry uh, f is an equivalence. Why is this the case? Well, remember s one over p was this colimit, so maps s one over p x is the limit of map s x. Uh, sorry, the map goes in the other direction. Multiplication by p, etc. And this map is exactly the projection onto the first factor. But these are all equivalences. So this map is in fact an equivalence. Now let W E a cyclic. We can write this slightly crazy chain of equivalences, but not too crazy. So I can first replace X by these maps from S one over P comma X. And then I can use the adjunction property and then use the fact that W is uh, S one over P acyclic. And this concludes the proof. Okay. This proof is probably not proving anything surprising to anyone, but uh, it's slightly tricky. You should try to do it uh, the first way you think of it. It doesn't quite work. All the steps are trivial, but you have to do them in the right order. Uh, it's one of those things.
Okay. Questions about this result? No, good. So now we can prove that, well, I'm calling it a theorem, but uh, it's overly selling it. The map from X to S one over P tensor X, which from now on I'm going to call X one over P exhibits x1 over p as the s1 over p localization of x. And to prove this, we only need to, to prove two things. So the first thing is that this guy, s1 over p tensor x, is S1 over P local by the criterion. About, we can look at its homotopy groups and P indeed acts invertibly in its homotopy groups because well, do, we construct it so that the case happen. So it's enough to, to show this map is um, S1 over P equivalence. And uh, this is, uh, well, this is not hard, but let's actually see how it works because that's right hand side is a co-limit. And since the fiber of this map is actually going to be important in the story of P completions, so let's go through this carefully. Okay, for now, uh, for now, I'm going to, we'll look at this map, map as a co-limit of S1 over P equivalences. So X is going to be the co-limit of just the constant diagram at X, but X1 over P, remember, so that X is the co-limit, it's the co-limit of this map multiplication by P. And so in order to make the diagram commute, I have to add multiplication by bigger and bigger powers of P. That is this map. It's the co-limit of the map multiplication P to the N. So we're going to show that these are S1 over P equivalences. Why is that? Well, their cofiber is uh, X tensor S mod P to the N. So it's enough to show S one over P tensor S mod P to the N, which is S one over P over P to the N is zero. But this is uh, clear because uh, P to the N acts invertibly on S one over P. One word of warning. We have seen that every element of pi star S mod P is P power torsion. because this is an S1 over P acyclic object. It's not P torsion in general. That's a crazy fact, uh, but it is true. In fact, one can show it is P square torsion. 
however. Uh, and in fact, as it happens, let's see if I recall, the, I hope I'm recalling the right degree, but pi one of S mod two is Z mod four. It's easy to show that it's an extension of a Z mod two by another Z mod two, and you might be tempted to assume it's a Z mod two times Z mod two, but it's not. This is uh, an instance of a topological rather than algebraic behavior of, uh, of spectra. If you do it in chain complexes, if you take a chain complex and you take the cofiber of the multiplication by two map, you always get something whose homology is always two torsion. Uh, but in, in spectra, that doesn't happen. And you just, you have to, to go back to P square torsion. You can. And this is actually what impedes the factoriality because of, of, of S mod two, oh, sorry, of Moore spectra. But I would say we will discuss this later or probably I'll give it as an exercise. Uh, because if the Moore spectra were factorial, it would be quite easy to show that all the homotopy of S mod two would be uh, two torsion, but it's not. So, yeah, tough luck. Okay. So I'll put another remark. It's a very important one. So the map from L E X, you always have, sorry, actually I can see there is always a map from X to L E the sphere tensor X which is just obtained by tensoring by X, uh, the, the canonical map from the sphere to localization, which is always an E equivalence. That's easy to show because the fiber is X tensor some E acyclic spectrum. And so it's E acyclic. When this map, when the target, sorry, is E local, for every x, this implies that LES tensor x is the E localization of x. In this case, the localization is called smashing. It's a sm sorry, let me spell. Yeah. It's called a smashing localization. That's because the old name for the tensor product of spectra is the smash product. And we have seen that the S1 over P localization is smashing. Not all localizations are, and the next example will be a localization which is not smashing. Um, smashing localizations are particularly well behaved. For example, E local spectra are closed under co limits, which is not uh, a general feature of your local spectra. Um, and in fact, uh, we more or less know a complete list of all the smashing localizations, although more or less in the sense that it's dependent on a very uh, open conjecture, which might or might not be false. And actually, if you ask me, I would uh, bet on the falsehood rather than on the truth of that conjecture. And so the smashing localizations, we, we don't really have a description here, but we can sandwich them between two smashing localizations and the conjecture is that they're the same, but they're probably not. But they're the same on finite spectra. So in some sense, we know all the smashing localizations. But yeah, I'm not going to, to say more. Uh, except that we will see another example of a mesh localization uh, later without many proofs, unfortunately, because it will get more complicated. And it is 
not going to be an algebraic case like this, where you just invert a few primes. But you can think of invert smash localizations as inverting higher elements in some sense, uh, which opens the door to the periodicity phenomenon. But OK, Let's, let me first tell you as a minor, minor generalization of this S1 over P localizations, where I have a set of primes now. So let S, P1, P2, et cetera, a set of primes. Possibly infinite. That's allowed. You can define S of with S inverted as the colimit S P1, P1, P2, P1, P2, P3, etc. Adding one more prime at every point until I run out of primes. And then I just keep the one I have. Or maybe I never run out of primes. That's possible. And then as before, pi star tensor x is pi star of x with a set of primes inverted. This with the same proof. And uh, the same proposition with the same proof applies. A spectrum X is S as inverted local if uh, all prime in X at prime in S act invertibly on X. I won't repeat the proof. You have to do the same proof on instead of just S mod P, you have to work with S mod PI for all I. But And with the same proof as before, we see that the map X goes to S tensor X, which I'm going to write X as inverse, exhibits oh, the right hand side as the S, S inverse localization of X. Um, if you want, I can enter the details, but the proofs are literally the same. In fact, I was I had my notes open on the wrong page, and I was following the proofs of this proposition in the notes instead of the proofs of the previous ones. But they're really, really the same. And the reason I introduced uh, these, uh, these more general things is that, that they exist. So it's always important to give examples, but I can take S, S to be the set of all primes, in which case X S inverse, it's often written as X Q and it's called a rationalization. of x. And here I'm going to have to use again that theorem by Sayre uh, that I mentioned last time. And I have that pi star of sq is pi star of s tensor q, which is q in degree 0 and 0 everywhere else. because all other homotopy groups of spheres are finite groups. Uh, 
In particular, this implies that SQ is HQ. And uh, the goal of these is going to say that rational spectra are sort of algebraic. I'll state a, a precise theorem in this sense later. I won't be able to prove it, unfortunately, but I want to prove some results in this direction. Uh, in fact, uh, the first result is the proposition. So let X be a rational spectrum. Then there exists an equivalence X with the direct sum of H by M of X. So X is a generalized Amberlich MacLean spectrum. There are no fancy extensions, no fancy weird things that happen. We're rational and everything splits. Okay. Questions about this? I'm going to prove it in one second. And I'll give you a consequence that maybe you didn't expect. Sorry. Well, maybe not a question, rather a confusion. So you said that oh, by sorry. Sarah's theorem, yeah, only that. this special uh, homotopy group of the sphere is, uh, only one homotopy group of the sphere is infinite, right? Not two yes. of them. Okay. Well, uh, I ah, because those Sir are stable. Theorem, uh, yeah, I, I stated the theorem for the unstable homotopy groups in which there is another one that's infinite. Uh, for example, the classical example is pi three of S two, which is Z. But when you go right. to the stable range, this becomes a Z mod two, so it becomes finite. Okay, great. That was the I, confusion. I, I, I gave. Uh, yeah. I gave a precise bound. That's. No zero, only pi, pi, pi n of s n and pi two n minus one of s n, and when you go in the stable range, only pi n of s n survives. The other um, die. If you look at the estimate in the uh, Hamilton suspension theorem, I this actually can be better understood using rational homotopy theory, but of which this topic that I'm talking about right now is actually a start, but uh, I'm not, I don't think I have time to say anything more than this. Okay, uh, thanks. Okay, let me prove the proposition. So the point is to construct maps sigma n h pi n of x to x iso on pi n because then you get a map from the direct sum which is an iso on on all pi i's and you win now pi n of x is a q vector space because, well, it's a Q module, so it's a Q vector space. So it has a basis. Let me call it EI, I, and I, N. And we have a map. Some I in I, N, and S to X, which is just EI. But now this is rational. So these, by the universal property, factors through the rationalization. And also remember the rationalization is a left adjoint, so it commutes with colimits and everything. And what it boils down to is that the rationalization is just the sum of the shifts of the rationalizations of the sphere since this is a smashing localization. So, and this is sigma n h pi and x. 
by, by definition. And this is the, the map, the required map. Map which is on ISO on pi n. And well, zero everywhere else because uh, this Eisenberg McLean spectrum doesn't have any other homotopy groups that can go anywhere else. So this is the proof of this theorem. And as a corollary, let me give you an interesting fact. Well, KU rationalized is the sum for n in z of S2n of HQ. Because uh, uh, if you remember, we saw the homotopy of KU. And uh, well, it was Z in each even degree. And when you rationalize, you get a Q. So we, we have a map KU to this guy. And I'm not talking much about ring structures, but from the fact that it says meshing localizations, it always it also follows that it's a ring map, but I'm not going to, to, to enter this and just mentioning because which is called the churn character. So H. And then we can easily prove this proposition. Let X be a finite space, even a finite spectrum, but I'm stating it for spaces since that's the setting in which it's usually stated. For example, take a compact manifold. Then you can take the KU homology of X rationalized And that's equivalent to, well, greater than or equal to zero, H2n x comma q. Now, this is a bit unsatisfying because what someone would like to have is also an explicit formula for this churn character, which exists but I'm not going to be able to talk about it, but it's very, very explicit. I like the treatment in Milner and Stashev, but there are, you can find it everywhere. Also the Wikipedia page on churn character, presumably. Uh, but it is fun to see that uh, this stuff exists just for abstract trivial reasons. Uh, even if of course it's not satisfying for computational perspective uh, to, to just have this. And in fact, I, I'm doing it KU because it's the historically important example, but this works for every spectrum, of course. I'm using nothing about KU here. So you can do this story for every spectrum. So actually proof, well, since X is a finite space, maps sigma infinity plus X blank commutes with filter colimits. And so KU X rationalize, which is just the mapping space, sorry, the pi note of the mapping spectrum. Oh, sorry, I should. And then you can move the rational inside since everything commutes with filter colimits and rationalization is a filter colimit. It's just a colimit over this product of the eyes. Oh, and this was a wrong, sorry, I should have said product, not direct sum. Yeah, apologies, uh, that was this. No, 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 direct sum, direct sum, never mind. Hmm. 
and yeah, okay. I don't know why. HQ, and now I can bring the filter collimit outside again. And this is exactly what this is. And okay, I have n greater or equal than zero. That's just because uh, the negative cohomology of a space is zero. The more canonical way of writing it would have all n in Z, but of course, these are just the zero groups. And that's fun uh, that this thing exists and it exists for such formal reasons. Of course, again, I'm slightly cheating because what would be interesting is to give a description of this map in terms of churn classes, which is the original definition, but I won't have the time to do the theory of churn classes here. But still. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm out of time. Oh, I just want to say the precise theorem in the sense that the um, rational spectra are algebraic. So it's a special case of a theorem by Schwede and Shipley. I'm not exactly sure if this particular special case was proven before. Uh, but uh, let me attribute it to them. I uh, thought so this particular special case again uh, was probably suspected if not proven well before them. Um, so the infinity category per Q is equivalent to the derived infinity category of Q Q which if you've never seen it before, it's obtained by the chain complexes of Q vector spaces and you invert the quasi isomorphisms. So this is completely algebraic. No, two dots should be here. So in this sense, rational, Homotopy theory tends to be very much algebraic in a very precise sense. And this is true for like this classical stable homotopy theory. There is also an unstable version of this theorem and there are equivariant, motivic and so on variants of this theorem. In general, when you have rational coefficients, stuff tend to lose all the topological information. And ultimately the reason is that theorem by Serre that rationally there are no higher homotopy groups on the spheres. This theorem is not that hard to prove actually at this point, but I, it would be a, a long digression. And I, it was one of the dream theorems I wanted to do in this class, but I don't think I'm going to be able to, to cover it, unfortunately. Okay. I think I'll stop here and we'll talk about completion at primes next time instead. Are there questions? Okay, if there are no questions, have a nice week and let's see each other on Thursday. Bye. 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 Bye.